beginning of November 2020 here in the Phoenix, Arizona area. And today's video is going to be on cherries or cherry substitutes. So if you're like me, you might have not grown up in, in the Phoenix area, might have come from a cooler climate. Myself, I came from Northern California, you know, used to being able to grow typical cherry varieties like Bing. Uh, they don't do so well here. In fact, you really can't grow a typical cherry variety. There are two low chill varieties that you can try out. There's one called Mini Royal and Royal Sweet. They actually need to be together because they need the cross-pollination. So rather than grow a temperate cherry variety, um, your best bet is actually to go the route of a tropical cherry. And tropical cherries are in a different family of plants. They're going to be in the myrtle family and often in eugenia as far as the genus so right in front here i've got one of those varieties i've actually had this growing for about four years it looks really sad um, because of the brutal summer we had this is actually the cherry of the rio grande i've had this tree in the ground for four years now you can see actually the bark looks similar to a guava, which makes sense because it's in the same family as guavas. So it has some of the similar characteristics. But you can see the peeling bark, and this guy actually got pretty severely burnt here on the trunk. You can see scald. The leaves fried on this one, and you can see there's some green trying to come out now that we've cooled down. If you can call near 100 degrees uh, cooling down for November, but there you have it. Uh, this one, for the four years I've had it in the ground, it has struggled in summer. And it's only produced three cherries the whole time. That's not to say that this can't be grown successfully here, but don't expect a huge yield. You know, if you're into collecting all the various Eugenias and you just really love plants and want to grow everything you can, then, you know, put this on your list. You can definitely keep it alive here but as far as large fruit production that's a miss this guy's kind of a loser in that respect um, I don't really recommend it if you want to get fruit another tropical cherry option also in the Eugenia family is the Suriname this right here is a three-year-old black star it's a grafted variety of Suriname cherry now, Suriname cherries are quite resinous. Some people may not even like the taste. If you're into spicier taste profiles, then this could be a winner for you. Now, as you can see, despite that this has been in the ground for three years, it hasn't grown all that much. I've never pruned it, and it's about waist height. It's very, very small. This has probably produced six cherries for all the time that I've had it. Now you could probably get a little bit more production as the tree grows. It can handle our summers much better than the cherry of the Rio Grande. You can see really no burn. It looks pretty nice and lush, although it does get some afternoon relief. So again, I would, I would say that this is great for someone who just wants to collect everything, but if you really are trying to find the best tropical cherries that are going to give you the most fruit, I would not put this on your list. And you also definitely want to try the cherry because it is an acquired taste. It is very resinous. Even the black cherry that's supposed to be sweeter is quite spicy. So you need to actually enjoy that, that taste. If you're looking for a sweet cherry, this is not the one for you. Now over in this area where this banana plant is, I did have a Patanga tuba. It's another type of tropical cherry you can try here. Um, extremely slow growing. I had a six inch plant from Top Tropicals. In the course of a year and a half, it did absolutely nothing. I ended up just pulling the thing out. Um, if you have a great load of patience or you have the financial ability to buy a large specimen tree, um, you'll be able to get fruit off of that Patanga tuba. I've heard it's quite um, tolerant to our summers, but it's not going to produce a huge amount of fruit for you again. It's probably in the neighborhood of a dozen or so cherries in a year. Another type of tropical cherry I had growing in my yard that is no longer growing here is the Pitomba. 
It was growing right in this, this area, so you get a sense of the microclimate. Uh, that little bush survived uh, three years, and I just ended up pulling it because after all those years, it didn't grow at all, and I did not get one cherry off of it. My feeling with that plant, with that species, the Potoma, is that it needs more humidity. I've seen some people growing it successfully in California. 9B, you know, has a bit more humidity there. If you're into collecting plants, that's one that will definitely survive here. Uh, prefer some afternoon shade, but you're not going to get fruit from it. Sadly, it just does not do well in our desert climate. So in my mind, uh, all those varieties that I just talked about are not really great contenders to be in your yard. Um, so I'm going to show you next one that is. This is by far one of the easiest fruiting shrubs that you can put in your yard. Um, this was planted in 2016 as a three gallon. It did take approximately 16 months to finally get fruit on it. Once you've had your shrub in the ground for at least a year and a half, it's going to reliably produce fruit for you. So you can see the cherries here. They're, they come in in springtime and then again in the fall. So the sugars are gonna be the strongest once the fruit ripens to its full potential, um, turning to this more dark red color. And almost getting to a purple, as you can see on this one. Now the flesh to seed ratio is not terribly great on this one. It's definitely less than 50-50 as far as uh, more seed than flesh. So you don't get a whole lot of fruit to each bite, but it is very prolific with how much fruit it puts on. So it's very worthwhile to grow. In fact, um, I'm putting more of these in my yard because they can take the sun so well. You can see that there are quite a few on the ground here. I just can't get to all the fruit because it produces so much. And the birds really don't bother it, especially if you let your shrub grow a bit. I really don't prune this all that much. Just a light pruning is all it really needs. And on care, honestly, I don't do much for this. I don't even feed it anymore. I leave, leave the leaves around it, provide a heavy mulch for it. And that's about it. You really don't need to do much with this. Um, the water needs aren't, aren't high. So very easy one to grow here in the desert. And definitely the best option of all the tropical cherries to grow. Hope this video kind of helped you understand the options for growing cherry substitutes here in the, the hot desert climate. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.